But we begin tonight with the essence of MAGA and a countdown. A little over 24 hours from now, the federal government will likely shut down. And that will happen for only one reason, because the fundamental essence of MAGA, Donald Trump's twisted version of republicanism, is chaos and cruelty. Today, an effort to pass a continuing resolution to keep the government open for one month failed. It will not surprise you that the people who voted to shut the government down were members of the MAGA caucus, including insurrectionists Andy Biggs and Paul Gosar and Matt Gates and Marjorie Taylor Greene and sometimey MAGA Nancy Mace. And if you want to understand why these House Republicans are doing this, all you need to know is how desperately Kevin McCarthy wants to keep his precious gavel and how entertaining it would be for the MAGAs to take it from him by forcing him to reopen the government with the help of the only rational people he can find in the House, the Democrats, after which the MAGA Chaos Caucus can trigger a vote to remove him as Speaker. It is so bad that this coming mess is being dubbed the Seinfeld shutdown because it would be a shutdown over nothing. We do know that ahead of this disaster, the MAGA Republicans marshaled the awesome power of the U.S. House of Representatives, the seat of our democracy, to hold a six-hour impeachment inquiry hearing that blew up in their faces. Republicans know the American people don't want their shutdown. So instead, the Republicans on this committee are attempting to divert and distract the American people's attention by spending taxpayer dollars on this sham impeachment hearing two days before they shut the government down in hopes that the media, and I don't just mean Fox News, will fall for their scheme. In fact, in Chairman Comer's district, Republicans' shutdown will cost 8,937 of his constituents their paychecks. In Jim Jordan's district, Republican shutdown will cost 3,939 of his constituents their paychecks. While Chairman Comer and Jordan are punishing those, con those constituents, they have made sure that they and their staff won't have to pay a price. According to reports, they have been working behind the scenes to figure out who will be deemed essential employees. Unsurprisingly, that includes the staffs of their committees. Now, members of Congress will all be paid because the Constitution says so. To reiterate, these MAGA Republicans would rather pursue a quixotic impeachment inquiry against a president against whom their own experts, their own witnesses say they have no actual evidence on. They'd rather do that than figure out how to pay millions of federal workers and make sure hundreds of millions of Americans get the government assistance, the food assistance, the government services that they count on. It is cruel, and it also makes no political sense. But here's the thing. The Republican Party has spent decades demonizing the federal government and the people who work there, going all the way back to Ronald Reagan, way, way before MAGA. But these are real people with bills to pay and families to feed and rent to cover. They are not some monolithic blob of evil deep staters. They are millions of women who rely on SNAP benefits for groceries and baby formula. They may be turned away from stores as early as next week. And then there are the active duty service members who will have to report for duty, but will not get paid. The border that Republicans claim to care so much about, well, the agents and officers overseeing it will not get paid either, meaning Republicans are literally defunding the border. It's also the janitors who clean the federal buildings and the congressional cafeteria workers who, unlike most furloughed federal workers, will get no pay and no back pay as they continue to serve the members of Congress. You worry that you won't be able to pay your bills by the end of the month if Congress doesn't act? Oh, yeah. Uh, yes. I worry about that. A whole lot. I'm trying to... <laughs> I'm trying to do make ends meet so these programs like WIC you know, if they kind of go away, it's it kind of puts me in a little tough spot. Rob Peter to pay Paul because they want to do a government shutdown and they're not thinking of, okay, what is this going to call everybody else? Republican Senator Roger Marshall of Kansas told the Kansas City Star, federal employees have incredible pay. They have easy hours. Only a fourth of them are actually back working in the office right now. So we all have to, you know, sacrifice. The average pay of a civilian federal employee 
is roughly $48,000 a year, while members of Congress pay themselves $174,000 a year. Then there's New York Republican Congressman Brandon Williams, a multimillionaire, by the way, who initially said that he wouldn't sacrifice his salary, but reversed course when he was slammed for his decision. He did say that these workers have to do uncomfortable things in order to reform our country. Ah, you're welcome. Oh, and many of these folks that they're about to hurt also have student loans to pay, which they're going to have to do while not getting a paycheck during the shutdown. Because thanks to Republicans going all the way to the Supreme Court to block student debt relief, student loan payments restart this weekend. These Republicans are turning their backs on all of these people, and, and they don't give a damn. They couldn't care less about the people who will be hurt because the appropriations bills that they're actually trying to pass would cut by at least 30 percent housing subsidies for the poor, medical research and clinical trials for cancer, nutrition for pregnant women, Head Start, the EPA, NASA, the Justice Department, toxic waste cleanup, and so much more. Republicans voted for that bill, including the so-called Biden Republicans, who represent districts that overwhelmingly voted for President Biden. Cruelty is the point with MAGA extremists. And by the way, Maya Angelou said it, and it's true. When people show you who they are, believe them the first time. Joining me now is Congresswoman Summer Lee of Pennsylvania, Charlie Sykes, editor-at-large of The Bulwark and an MSNBC contributor, and Sahil Kapoor, NBC News senior national political reporter. For, and I will start with you, Sahil. Please tell us what's going on in the mess behind you in that building. It's a chaotic situation here on Capitol Hill, Joy. A House Republican bill crashed earlier today on the floor after 21 Republican hardliners voted against their own conservative proposal, even though it included a number of Republican priorities. The Republican conference regrouped after they held a lengthy meeting, and it ended without any perceivable path forward. The government shuts down at midnight tomorrow, and there does not appear to be any way to prevent it at this moment. The Senate, meanwhile, is moving forward slowly with its own bipartisan bill to fund the government through November 17th. That is expected to pass in the next few days. And meanwhile, you've got a lot of House Republicans who are frustrated with these hardliners who are preventing their bills from moving forward. The question becomes for them, what are they going to do about it? And what Democrats are inviting them to do is to team up with them, to work with Democrats on a so-called discharge petition, go around Speaker Kevin McCarthy. If just five or six Republicans sign that, they can move a bipartisan bill to the floor of the House and uh, force a vote on it. That's what uh, Congressman Brendan Boyle told me uh, Republicans can do and move a, a bill within the next seven legislative days. Meanwhile, the House is branding this an extreme Republican shutdown, uh, and they are saying that they support the Senate bill, the bipartisan bill. They, they're saying what the House Republicans are doing is dead on arrival. Broadly, Joy, there's a 30,000-foot view here. We saw this in the 1990s when Newt Gingrich and Republicans uh, shut down the government. Their goals failed. We saw this uh, a decade ago when Ted Cruz and Republicans shut down the government to try to defund the ACA. That didn't work. Now a new generation of Republicans is picking a similar fight against a Democratic president. It looks like they, too, will have to touch this stove and feel how painful it is before the government can reopen. Joy. Saha Kapoor, thank you very much. Uh, wave your arms if, if you see anything, any movement behind you, and we'll, we'll get you back over here uh, to, to continue talking about this. Thank you, my friend. Much appreciated. Let's go uh, to our other guests. Uh, uh, Representative Lee, um, you heard Sahil Kapoor. Um, discharge petition. How likely is it? Is there talk of that, active talk of that? Are Democrats prepared to move forward on that? And when could that even happen? Yeah, I mean, there's, we're hearing talks about many different things. I think that the, what Democrats are actually preparing for is that this MAGA Republican shutdown is going to go forward. And I think that they're hoping to play chicken with us a little bit, right? They're, they're, they're in a game of who's going to blink first as, as they attempt to push through some of the most extreme things, right? But Democrats recognize what's really at stake here, and it's everyday people. And what our caucus uh, message is is that we aren't going to relent. We're not going to stand aside. We're not going to accept the ransom, uh, pay the ransom, uh, and, make, uh, and make American people lose. So they need to come to the table with the deal that they They've already negotiated themselves, and we're prepared uh, to move forward with that.
And by the way, that was on May 28th. Uh, my notes here, my wonderful producers. On May 28th, Kevin McCarthy and President Biden made an agreement on a deal to raise the debt ceiling. The Senate has already passed that. That is what would pass the United States House if Kevin would put it on the floor. Am I wrong about that? You are not. Congresswoman? No, you're, okay. you're, you're exactly right. 